Please, everyone, this is Gerard, and Chief of Philippine Soul Magazine, aka SGIB Magazine, and I am on my way to New York tomorrow, and I wanted to have reminders of home here in the Philippines. So I hope okay. you enjoy my story. If you didn't hear it, this is Gerard, and Chief of Philippine Soul Magazine, and this is just a little music that I recorded so that it remind me of my home. As you can see, I'm in New York. I'm at the VA hospital. Uh, you can see the trees. There's something that you don't see is them changing colors. They're at the end of fall, so the leaves are real, the leaves are real burnt and dark. You can see them like this. But anyway, I just want to stop and just say hello to all, all my Filipino friends. Let me see, Joy, Kathy, Michael, Natalie, Jadon, uh, Kathleen, uh, who else, Kate, um, who else, uh, Mecca, uh, uh, all of you, all of you, all of you, I just want to say I miss you so much, Yo, it's really cold out here, I look I got gloves on, scarf and all that, so I really kind of miss the Filipino weather. But I'll be home soon. This visit has been, it's been very nice. I was really, really uh, surprised to receive the Lifetime Achievement Award at uh, Colors. Uh, Blaze the mic, a lot of you know she's my partner here in the US. Not more or less my partner, but my godchild. She calls me the godfather. And um, we've been doing things together for many, many years. So. It was a real surprise for her to give me. I didn't show you the plaque that she gave me, but at least you did see the the uh, the uh, the statue, you know, the trophy, the accolade, the accolade she gave me, which was really nice. And it was so it was so interesting because I had so much I wanted to say. I had so many I wanted to thank. I wanted to thank Ellen Bayou and you know my PR department, and my public relations department, everybody. Uh, uh, Chrissy and Varel and everybody who's helped over the years who have helped make SGIB magazine to what it is today because my doing my magazine is something that has gave me focus in my life in my journey no matter what I was going through I knew it was there was something that I, I need to be doing and that need to be doing was putting that magazine together and um, it has been a blessing in disguise. It, 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 it is something that that adds relevancy to me and keeps me current, as I guess what is the best thing to say, you know. And I, uh, uh, um, we all need something. That's why I say dreams are nothing more than plans and waiting action, you know. Uh, and, so just got intention to believe that because everyone should be sorted with something, a dream, a goal, an idea, a train of thought, something. And you got to have something to focus on in life, you know, to keep you on a path of, of I don't, I don't want to say straight and narrow, but keep you focused on, 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 on a goal, or keep you focused on a, on, on a journey, you know. You know, I, there was a once upon a time <coughs> that my life was like that of a shark. I was just going like this. You know, whatever it is I can do, whatever it is I can get into, you know, and it's not a very good way to live. You know, I wasn't afraid and, and I didn't care. And that's a hell of a way to be is that when you're not afraid and you don't care because then you're a very dangerous individual. And at one point in time, I was a very dangerous individual, not so much to the public at large, but to myself. So, you know, uh, I, I, I vow never to be that way again, you know. And once I paid my, my dues to society by going to prison, I, you know, I made my mind up that that wasn't something I ever wanted to do again or be again. And this March, by the grace of God, it'll be 20 years since I had a pair of handcuffs on me, and that's good. And, and that doesn't happen by, by being um, reckless, irresponsible, and, uh, or not caring and not afraid. You know, I have a friend of mine, he's contacted me uh, while I'm here in New York, and you know he wants to get together, blah blah. And I could just tell by by the tone and, and by the energy that he was putting out that this is someone who, although we shared a past, it's not something I want to have in my future because 
that path may lead into something that that I'm not really prepared to deal with the consequences of it. So it's also being a consequential thinker. A consequential thinker is one who thinks about the consequences of your actions. You know, so uh, so I do that today. I think about the consequences of my actions. You know, uh, tomorrow's Thanksgiving here. You know, I'll be spending it with my family. You know, my my daughter and her and her uh, her partner, which is a good. You know, I haven't yet seen my brother. I've spoken to him, but I, I will spend a couple of days with him. You know, uh, coming up, and um, you know, so um, uh, Thanksgiving is is. Um, it's not. It's not. It has not been very often that I, I've I've celebrated <coughs> any of the holidays, even through my childhood, because that's just the nature of the beast of how I was raised. But anyway, I just wanted to stop and and, and say a few things to you and, and let you know that that I enjoyed chatting with you, each and every one of you who have taken the time to chat with me. You know. Um, uh, I really miss you. I really miss you guys a lot. And I can't wait to get back. It's, it's, it's almost like I can't get back soon enough. I want to get back. I miss Helen. Where's Helen? <laughs> you know, my my Siberian Husky, I miss her a lot. And Joy's taking a moment. Joy, thank you. Thank you, Joy, for and uh, and Kat and Michael for taking care of the Ponderosa while I'm gone. <coughs> and Mom and Pops, thanks. You know, I, I still have not yet to see Nina. I, I'll be seeing Nina probably next week something like this excuse me before I leave you know um, so there's still some rounds I got to make and this Saturday I'm going to another event that we'll see what happens you know uh, we'll see what happens I'm trying to get as much you know as much coverage as I can while I'm here you know uh, I'll be on the radio uh, on the 4th so they'll be interviewing me on the 4th at the radio station so I'll be there doing that too so it feels good, you know. It feels good to be recognized for, you know, for um, uh, for being me, you know, for for my recognizing all, you know, me, you're know, doing what I can to help others achieve their dreams and their goals, similar to what Bonnie Hilton Sweeney did. Bonnie, who is the founder of the Pre-Grammy Party, and who was also Mr. James Brown's um, uh, manager and editor of his magazine called The Truth. And the pre-Grammy party, you know, was a was was created at a time when when uh, blacks weren't allowed to get their Grammys live, and they had to be pre-recorded. And Maurice White, who was the founder of Earth with a Fire, who was a powerhouse at that time, just decided that it wasn't going to happen. If they couldn't receive theirs like the white boys were here, wasn't going to do it. <coughs> and Bonnie single-handedly, you know, at the time, Clyde Davis's. Grammy party was the, was the place to be, but uh, Bonnie, who also worked with Playboy, I can't say single-handedly with Bonnie because she had Colomita Pittman, who was uh, was uh, a partner of hers, who was uh, a close confidant and a backer of the pre-Grammy party. Along, uh, she today hosts the Rosebud uh, Breast Awareness uh, uh, Society in Los Angeles. So in October, if you hear that event, go see it. It's the closest thing to Bonnie and her husband Jerry Pittman. Jerry Pittman, who was the first black limousine owner in Los Angeles who was also uh, hands-on on that uh, programming party along with Janae DeWah who is the founder of uh, Janae DeWah who is who played Bologna in Good Times and her daughter Rani Rani who was also part of that and April Sutton April Sutton who was the first VJ on um, B, uh, BET and, and v, uh, VH1 uh, video one or you know uh, she's gotten recognition for being you know for her, uh, uh, for her contribution in the broadcasting engineer, broadcasting engineering. <coughs> so, so uh, there was a number of people. Kenny Bates, who was part of, who I just learned had just passed away. You know. Um, so anyway, so Earth Wind and Fire and them had. Uh, so Bonnie had decided to uh, what she. Uh, I mentioned that she worked for Hugh Hefner for public relations. If there was a party going on, and if Bonnie Hilton Sweeney wasn't doing your 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 guest list, you know, then chances are your number of A listers were, were dwindling down to only a few, because everybody wanted to be what Bonnie wanted to be, similar to like my mother. That's why I love her so much, you know. So anyway, so uh, uh, Bonnie decided to put the pre Grammy party together, and uh, it, it's very interesting how she did. She did it in a banquet room, around tables of ten. And this is why this is why I paid homage to Colors 
because Colors International, you know, she's doing the same thing. She's created a venue <coughs> for up and coming artists to have a place to network where people can network and, and, and help one another and uplift one another and support one another. Well, Bonnie had did it around tables of 10. So, it, you know, it, it was no problem going up and talking to the Godfather so Mr. James Brown. There was no problem going and talking up to the OJs. There was no problem going and talking up to um, um, Judge Maybelline. <laughs> you know, it was funny. The reason I chuckled because when I went to the Grammy party, I saw Judge Maybelline. I said, oh, I know who you are. You're Judge Judy. She said, no, that's the white one. <laughs> I said, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I watched a lot of them on TV, but I didn't know their names. You know, so anyway, so... Uh, so that's what made her, you know, uh, Joe Jackson was a, a, a permanent fixture there who just passed away, God bless him, you know, and um, he would always be showcasing his new female group, because <laughs> Joe Jackson, he, he kept busy always having a female group to showcase there. So, um, you know, so, so that's what made the pre-Grammy party such a success. And it went on for many, many years, many years, until she passed away, and it's unfortunate that when people have created these, 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 these venues that that, that 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 provided so much for so many people that when they go, the organization goes or the venue goes. And uh, you know, uh, I try to carry it on in, in Los Angeles, in Las Vegas. You know, uh, you know the story. I'm not going to to go into that, but um, I, I know how much she meant to me and, and in my life. You know, and. and Everything, matter of fact, she was the reason why my magazine came about because I was the East Coast representative of the Godfather Soul magazine, Mr. James Brown. You know, and uh, I told her I wanted to put a magazine together. And she said, I'll call this person. I called, and his name's Harry Wrangler. And Harry Wrangler said, Bonnie told me you called. I said, Yes. So he said, What do you want? And I said, oh, Well, Harry, I want to put a magazine together. He said, Wait. And then he gave me another number. He said, Call this number. And I called this number, and it was Greg Miller. And he said, Harry told you to call me. He said, yeah, well, what do you want? He says, <clears throat> I said, I want to put a magazine together. He said, wait, say no more. And he gave me um, um, a password to a website that had all the artists in the world who were touring, who were doing interviews, who were dropping new projects, you know. Uh, uh, and it was like going to a grocery store, picking up fruit. I had that same opportunity picking up with artists, picking them out. And one day I was sitting home and I was watching um, a public access to do wop shows, you know, because I was with Timothy Wilson, who was the former lead singer of the uh, Frankie Lyman's Teenager, and he was uh, my Queen of Hearts, Tiny Tim and the Hits. And, and whenever he did his projects alone, I opened up for him by introducing him. And uh, uh, <laughs> I was watching it, and then at the end of the, the broadcast, the first name I saw on the screen was produced by Harry Wrangler, and I had no idea that that's who it was I was talking to. So that's the importance of, that's the importance of networking. And you know, it's not a matter about, you know, what you can do with someone and what you can get out of it. It's a matter of, of what can you do for someone to help them achieve their dream and their goal. And you take self pride in knowing that you help someone pass on to the next step, you know, so, that's how the pre-Grammy party came about, and, and uh, um, with Earth, Wind, and Fire being the powerhouse and refusing, uh, it kind of changed, or started to change in how the Grammys started handing out their Grammy awards. And then, of course, with the Jacksons kicking in the door, you know, uh, also, they had no other chance but to change how they did things. But anyway, so that's a story that I think that needs to be shared about Bonnie. That Bonnie, think, you know, she created something that gave black entertainers and performers and people who've done things in the community, you know, uh, uh, a place to to celebrate their achievements for that year. So, you know, that's why I think she needs to deserve to be in the history books. You know, so you won't hear anything spoken about her, and it's unfortunate because of the, the, the tremendous amount of things that she's done to to bring the black entertainment industry to where it is today. <clears throat> okay, so again, this is Gerard Ed and Chief of Filipino Soul Magazine. Remember, dreams are nothing more than plans awaiting action. Never disrespect the elderly and always pull someone up. And sometimes, sometimes you'll be the only one to see your vision. And the best revenge in life is to live good.
I'm living good today in cold New York. I can't wait to get back to the Philippines, baby. Believe that. And if you haven't got a dream, a goal, an idea, a train of thought, don't worry about it. Do what I used to do. Get as much you can, as fast as you can, and go home. And remember, I always love you more. And if you're lucky enough to have a woman like Ollie Woodson, formerly singer of The Temptations, once sung, treat her like a lady. And you know, people ask me why I relax my hair, why I keep my hair straight, like this, because I want to be the reminder of the Chitlin Circuit. I want to be the reminder of classic soul. You know, I want to, you know, uh, 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 I want to be the representative for that. As being one of the last generations who've seen all five original Temptations perform, you know, um, I want to be that representative. And so that's why I I look the way I do. And I wear my hair the way I do. So I hope you now know that that's what I'm doing. Okay, so again, <coughs> the best revenge of life is to live good. I'm living good today. I hope you are too. And remember, I'll always love you more. I'll talk to you later. Baby, there'll be, baby, there'll be more CD uh, videos coming up. Don't forget to subscribe. And it's Ellen Bayou, 2016 Daily Showtime winner and public relations for Filipino Soul Magazine would say. Hit the bell. We'll talk to you later. Peace.